So to build our custom loop design, we're going to be using Bricks Builder, obviously. And we're also going to be using this alongside Advanced Custom Fields, the free version. So that's only two tools we need to achieve this end result. So let's take a quick look at what that result is going to be. So this is what we're going to be creating. We're going to create this hero section at the top and then underneath we've got these individual card designs as part of our customized loop. They include both custom data, standard WordPress data, but they're all wrapped up in our own custom design. So this takes it beyond what you could easily do with the built-in functions for the post loop inside Bricks itself. So now we've seen what we're going to create, let's take a look at how we go about creating it. So jumping into the WordPress dashboard, what we need to do is go into the Bricks option and inside there, we're going to choose templates. Now templates is where we can go ahead and set up the key template pages we want to use throughout our site. We can then apply conditions to them for as and when they need to be used. In this example, we're going to create our custom archive layout, but let's go ahead and say we want to add a new template. We're going to give this a name. We'll call this recipe archive, and what we can do is we can come up to the template type, and we'll say we're going to set this to be an archive. Once we've done that, we're going to click on publish, and we're simply going to edit this with Bricks to take us into the Bricks editor. So once loaded in, you can see we now have our basic layout. You might notice this, we've also got a dark background for our page element. So let me quickly show you what I've done here. So if we come into the settings option and into our theme styles, you can see I've got a global style set up inside here. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about how this all works. The basics are this is where you can set up the global values for the different styling elements, your colors, your backgrounds, your typography, those kinds of things, and also apply conditions for where and when you want to use them. So let me just quickly show you what I've done. In the conditions, I've set this to be used on the entire website. And the general, which is the only other thing I've set up and changed right now, if we come in, I've set a site background and I've set the color inside there. If you want to follow along, this is 1F, 1F, 1F. So you can follow along with exactly what I'm doing. Other than that, nothing else has been changed. We applied it. This gives us now our darker background. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is create our hero section. I'm going to fly through this relatively quickly because this is not an important aspect. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back out, add our elements in. We're simply going to come down and choose to insert a section. You can see this now creates a section and a container inside it. The section is full width. The container that sits inside it is picking up whatever size you've set as default, but you can override that. So if we come into the container and we come over into style inside there, if we jump into layout, you can see we can set the width inside here. So if I want to set this to be 1400 pixels, for example, I can simply do that insert. And now that's set that to 1400 pixels wide. Okay. With that being done, let's go back and select our section. We're going to set our height on here. We're going to set this to be 600 pixels, but you can use, can use things like viewport height, pixel values, M's, REMs, percentages, all the different things you want to use are available to you. Next up, with the section still selected, let's go ahead, close the layout down, come into our background, choose to select an image, and we'll grab this one of a very tasty looking pizza and insert that into a design. We'll just set this to be the size that I want to work with, and we'll just quickly set the position to be center, center. I don't want any repeat and cover for the way this is actually going to look. So we've now set our background. Let's go ahead now into our gradient overlay. Let's change this from background and set this to be overlay. And then we're going to choose our color that we want to work with. So we're going to select our color from there. And then you'll see we'll just adjust the opacity or the transparency setting until we get this to around about 50% so we can see the background enough, but it'll still give a separation with our text. Now, speaking of our text, let's go ahead and insert that. So we'll come back to our elements. We'll go and we'll grab the standard heading, drop that into the container, and you can see that now sits inside our container. Let's go and change the wording and the color. So let's just highlight all of this. First of all, we'll select it all. We'll make sure it's in style, and we'll come into our typography and change this to be white. We'll also change the size of this, and we'll say we're going to set this to 10 rem or 160 pixels, so 10 times 16 pixels, which is the base value of our font size. Okay, with that being said, we'll change the text inside there. So there we go, homemade and delicious, and it certainly looks that. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to make sure this sits in the center of that section, both horizontally and vertically. To do that, we select our section first of all. With that selected, we're going to come down and we're going to say we want this to be aligned to the center. 
to select that. And you may think we can use the align center here to align our text, but that won't actually work. So we can ignore that. We'll choose our container. And this is where our actual text content sits inside. So we'll set that inside here for our position. So we can come in, choose center for our line cross axis. And we've now got that centered horizontally and vertically all set up and working. Next, let's go ahead and just do a little bit of good housekeeping. Currently, this says section at the top, which means nothing to anybody. So let's just change that and we'll call that hero section. Hit return and we've now committed that name. So that now makes a lot more sense. We can close that down. And there's our hero section at the top, all set up, ready for us. Let's take a quick look at the additional fields that I've set up using advanced custom fields. Now, this is a very, very simple setup, nothing complex. It's just there to demonstrate so you could make this as advanced as you needed it to be. So let's go ahead and open up the custom fields, open up my field group. And inside there, I've got a single field group that contains just a couple of fields. We'll open that up. And I've got a cooking time and I've got servings. Now, both of these are simple numeric fields with just a simple label attached to them, some validation where applicable, presentation has been set up the way that I want, and there's no conditional logic being used on you at all. And finally, if we come into the settings section, the location rule basically has it set up that they're connected to the standard WordPress post type. However, if I was using a custom post type or anything else like that, I could associate it with that and follow pretty much the same procedure as you're going to see in this video. And that's really all there is to the ACF fields. That's pretty much it. Okay, so let me just quickly show you the content you can put in, the ACF fields that have been added in, and just to give you a head start on having some content to work with. So let me just show you how this works. Let's go ahead and add a title in. You can see once we add the title in, we've got the options in for our category. So we're gonna put this as meat. We can go and set a featured image. We'll choose this image of a steak. We'll say set featured image. We'll drop in some basic text. Here's our description. We then have the recipe fields underneath, which are those custom ACF fields. So the cooking time in minutes, so we're simply gonna go and drop in and say this is, uh, I don't know, say let's just say 15 minutes and servings we'll put down as two. Come back over to our post block and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just add in a little excerpt of information, which we're gonna use on the front page in our listing. So let's just copy a little bit of text, drop that inside there and click on publish. So we've now added in our first post. I'm gonna repeat that a couple of times to add some more content in so we can start using that in our design as we start to build things out. So now we need to start building our card design, but we also need to make sure this is contained inside the design we're working with. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a container that's gonna contain our content. So let's come back over into our design elements and from there, we can choose our layout options. And you can see we currently have four sections, containers, blocks, and divs. Now, they fundamentally do pretty much the same things, but they have slightly different reasons why you'd want to use them. And this is more from a semantic kind of layout. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. I've already covered these in an own dedicated video. Link in the description if you want to check that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a container in. So we're going to grab this container, drag it over, and drop that underneath and making sure that doesn't sit inside our hero section. So there we go. We now have our container, which is going to contain our actual content, which is our cards. So first of all, we need to go ahead and set up some basics before we even start building the card out. So select the container. We're gonna come over then into the options on the left-hand side. First things first, we're gonna set the flex wrap to be wrap because we want our flex content to actually wrap around as we kind of hit the spacing that we have available to us. This means that we'll have a row and column layout as and when needed. We're also gonna set the HTML tag to be div. We're gonna come down, set the direction. We wanna set this to be horizontal or basically rows. And then once we've done that, you see now all our options underneath will change accordingly. So now we can configure alignment, spacing, and so on. So for this example, we're going to make sure that we've got space between selected for our main axis. And this is going to give us space between the various different card designs that we have inside the layout. Moving on down, we want to set our column gap. And this is going to be the gap between each one of the columns for our cards. We're going to stick with using rems, but you could use, again, pixel values and so on. So for this, we're going to set three rems for the column and three rems for the actual row. In other words, 16 times three. 
Then we've got the flex grow and the flex shrink. We're going to set both of these to be one to allow it to shrink and grow as we need it to, as our design expands and more content comes in and so on. The final thing we want to do is make sure that this matches up to the exact same size as we've got set above. In this example, that's 1400 pixels. I just want a slightly wider design. So we'll come into style, open up our layout. And like we did on the hero section, we're going to come to our width and we're going to set this to be 1400 pixels. And you see now our orange box expands to give us the space that we have available. So now that we've set up the basics there, we need to take a quick look at the card designs. And let me just quickly explain the whole concept of the card design. Whenever you use a loop inside WordPress, whether that's a WooCommerce loop, a page loop, or anything else that you might want to create, you have a template for the design. In this example, this nice hero image section at the top, then we've got the name of the dish, we've got some meta information, we've got an excerpt, we've got a button that'll take us through to the actual detail page. We've also got some uh, custom information from ACF for the preparation time and the number of servings and so on. So what happens is we design one of these and the data is pulled in from our posts in this example, or it could be a custom post type if you created one specifically for your recipes. Then you can see we've got the featured image we'll pull in, the title, the meta information, and so on and so forth. Once that's been done one time and you've created it, the loop will then use that template and instance the next post, the next post, and the next post, and so on. And this is where we get this post loop because it basically just loops through the information using the design that we've set up. And that's exactly what's happening here. So for this example, we need to create this initial design for the card. So to do this, we come back over into Bricks, and we're going to select our container, come back over to our elements, and inside there, we're going to drop in a div. We're going to use the div to contain the actual design. So we'll select that, drag that into our container, and you see we get this little dinky box now over on the left-hand side, which is not big enough to do much at all. We can adjust that with some basic layouts when we create the loop. So let's just quickly drop in the information we need, and then we'll start to worry about customizing and make it look pretty and get everything up and running. What we're going to do is we're going to select this and we're going to go ahead, come into our elements. What we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to go and grab an image. We'll drop that inside what's going to become our container. And you can see we have no image selected. And how do we actually tell it what image we want to use? Well, let's select this, come over to our content, click on our little select dynamic data, choose featured image. And then you can set up any parameters you want. But you'll also notice that nothing is actually showing. So what's going wrong? What's what's happened? Well, first of all, let's quickly save this. All we need to do is tell Bricks what data we want to use, whether it's the live data or just something to fill things out as we design. So let's come into our core for our settings one more time. Let's come to our template settings. And you can see we've got conditions and we've got populate content. So now we can choose what content we want to use just for the preview of this. Don't worry about this being used on the live front end of the site. Doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the option to select from here. And you may think you'd use the archive posts or one of those because we're building an archive page. We don't want to do that. We just want some sample data. To do that, we're going to come down and say single post page. We're going to select the option then inside there. So I know I've got a burger inside here. So I'm going to search for burger. And there we go. There's our smashed cheese and bacon burger. Hit apply at preview. That will save, that will then refresh the page inside Bricks, and then that will show us the sample data. And there we go, there's our sample data, there's our burger, looking very, very tasty. Okay, so there's the first part. We've now dropped in an image. Let's go ahead and add in some more information. So let's come back to our elements, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the post title. So we'll just drag that over underneath our image. If we scroll up, you can see there's our smashed cheeseburger. Let's just close this little warning down. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and just keep adding the different elements in. So let's go ahead and add in some metadata. Let's drag that underneath our post title. We can select it. And now we can add, edit, or remove anything we do or don't want. So for example, I don't want comments in this case, so I'm going to delete those from there. And even though you can't see this too well, we basically have the author and we have the post date. So let's change the author name. Let's delete that from there. Let's click on the little lightning bolt and let's scroll through until we find the option for categories. We'll click on categories and this will then show any of the categories that are associated with this particular listing item. You can see we're going to adjust things then using the direction. We can set gaps and all those kinds of things. We'll leave that as it is for now. We may want to come back later and tweak some of those. So now we've got a metadata in there. Let's go ahead and add the next item in, which in this example is going to be 
the excerpt. So we'll drag that underneath, drop that there. If we want to customize this, again, you can see we can customize the length, the style, all those kinds of things. So let's keep on going now until we get the final parts in place. And add a rich text underneath the excerpt, and I'll show you why in a moment. And finally, we're going to grab a button and drop that underneath there as well. Make sure these, everything is lined up the way we want. Okay, so there's the basics. It looks absolutely terrible, but we've all the items that we need inside the div, which is the container for our card. So let's go and rename that. We'll just change this to card design. And now we can customize the look and feel of this to make sure it's in keeping with exactly what we want. I'm not going to worry about the scale or anything else to do with that right now. So first of all, let's go ahead and adjust a few things. Let's grab our card design. Let's come into the options for style. Inside there, we're going to come to background. We're going to set our background color. So we're going to choose our dark option, and we're just going to simply go ahead and lighten that up a little bit. Now, ideally, you would be using custom colors, which I would recommend doing. But like I say, this is more than what I want to cover in this particular video. Okay, so we've got that set up. We can now go ahead and do things like round the corner. So come to our borders, we'll come and choose a border from here. We'll say we want to put a radius. We'll link these together. We'll set this to be, let's try eight pixels and only a little bit of rounded edge. So that rounds the top corners. Now, if you've got an image that sits inside your design and this is going to be flush to the edges, you want to round the corners off, you need to make sure you also round the corners of the image. So let's go to the border again with the image selected. We'll select those options and we'll just set this to be eight top, eight right, ignoring the bottom. And now you can see that gives us those curved edges. While we're here, let's go and select our container that's going to contain our loop. Let's give ourselves a bit of breathing space by coming into our layout, come to our margins, top and bottom, and we'll just add in some like 70 pixels of margin, top and bottom, just to separate that from our hero section to see what we're doing. Okay, let's carry on. Let's select our post title. Come back to our content, we'll set this to be something like H3 because this isn't that important in the grander design. And let's come over there and we'll come into our styles. We'll choose our typography, we'll set our color, we'll set that to be, uh, in this example, let's go for the white, or almost white. Actually, let's just go for white, that's fine. We can change our font size, we'll set this to be something like 3 rem. And if we want to, we can change the sort of styling of this. I tend to like the capitalize, it'll capitalize each sort of individual word. Font family, for this example, let's just set pop-ins. But like I say, you would set this up globally. And we'll set the value inside there for the weight to something like 300. Let's actually set this to 2.5 rem. That's probably going to be a bit big. Actually, let's leave it to 2 rem. In your layout then, you're going to come in and add ourselves a bit of spacing to get this away from the edges. So we'll come to the left and right, and we'll just set this to be something like 30 pixels. And for this example, we'll also set 30 pixels at the top, just to separate it from there. And we can just carry on now doing exactly the same thing. So I'm not going to bore you by watching me do basically the same thing over and over again. I'm going to quickly run through it, and then we'll come back and move on. Okay, so there's the basic styling all done. What I want to show you now is if we open up the rich text section, you can see I just literally have some placeholder text inside here. Let's come back to our content, and you see this is just a normal text area. But you'll also notice that we can add in dynamic data. And this is one of the things I really love about how easy it is to do this kind of thing using Bricks Builder. So, for example, we want to drop in some information now from our ACF fields. So let's just type in preparation time and a colon. Come to a little dynamic link icon or dynamic icon, choose ACF from the abundance of different options we can choose from, and just choose cooking time. And then we'll just put in a couple of dashes, and we'll just say serving. And we'll do the same again. So we'll click, come down to our ACF fields, choose servings, and you can see that now puts in the placeholder for the ACF fields. And you can, if you want to, type these in yourself. You don't have to use that drop down, But you can see how easy it is to add that information in. And you see, now if we take a look underneath, we've now got that set up and displaying the placeholder information. Let's hit Save on our page, and let's preview this to see what's going on. So you can see, there's our preparation time, 30 servings, 4. So we can come back in, and we can just edit this if we want to. So we'll just say mins after this, so people know we're talking about minutes and not hours. 
And there we go. We've basically set that up. So we've done the basics. We've put all the things into place. It would need a little bit of tweaking to make sure everything looks exactly the way I want, but you kind of get the feel for what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and select our card design. And this is what we're going to go ahead and loop. So by selecting that, if we take a look on the left hand side, we've got use query loop under the content section. If we enable this, you can see that now we'll switch it on. And if we take a look, this now starts to populate it with the actual live data. Obviously, things don't look quite right at the moment. So let's come back into our query, first of all, and let's just set this up to be exactly what we want. Type is going to be posts. Post type is going to be post again. You can choose the order by, so we'll just say publish date. And you can set the number of posts per page. So this example, we'll set this to be six. And if you wanted to use multiple loops, you could easily offset the value of basic. That just says if you set offset by one, it would ignore the first post in the loop and start from the second and move on. And as you can see, there's an abundance of other options, including things like ignoring sticky posts or child of and tons of dynamic data and so on. We're going to leave that, though, as it is. We've got the basics of what we want. So we can see we've got pretty much everything in place, but currently the design just doesn't look quite right. So the final thing we need to do to get this to work is customize this layout. So let's just save this one more time. What we're going to do is we're going to come into our card design, switch into our content one more time, and you can see currently the flex basis is set to auto. We need to rectify that. First things first, let's set our flex grow to be one and our flex shrink to be one. And we're going to just open up the flex basis. Now we're going to be using the calc function. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this. I will link to some resources down below so you can check it out. But I'll quickly show you roughly what's going on and how you may want to tweak it to adjust things afterwards. So these are the three calculations we're going to use. We're using the calc function to say that we want to split things into 33.33% on the desktop. In other words, three columns. The second one is calc 50%, which is breaking this down into splitting it into two columns for the tablet view. And then, like I say, finally, we've got the 100% for a single column on mobile. So let's go ahead and grab this calculation from here. We'll come back into Bricks and we'll come to our flex basis and we're going to paste that inside there. And boom, once you see that, now that positions it exactly the way that we want. So now we've got that set up, let's switch over now to tablet view. And as you can see, what's happening is it's still using that same calculations. So we're still giving us three columns, which doesn't necessarily look the way that we want. So to deal with that, we're going to use our second calc calculation. So you can see this is using that 50% calculation. It's using the three rems for the spacing. And also you'll notice this now divides by two. In other words, two columns. Whereas the first one divides it by three, three columns. So you, hopefully you can kind of see where this is roughly coming from. So again, let's change our container. So what you need to do is make sure we've got our flex grow again. We'll set those back to one and we'll drop in our calculation. And so now you see we've got our nice two column layout. You also notice though, we're sitting probably a little too flush to the left and right hand side of our design. So let's select our container, jump over into style and simply come and add a little bit of padding. So let's just say one rem left and right. Gives us a bit of breathing space either side. And then finally come back to our card design, switch into mobile view. You can see we're still working with one so two column layout. Let's come back into our content and we'll change this now from the card that we just put 100% in. And that now gives us our nice single column layout. So let's just go ahead now and check our responsive modes. Everything's working. We've got our mobile all set up and looking great. Switch back over to our tablet. Again, looking great. We've got everything in two columns and switch back over to our desktop and our three column layout is all in place. Again, I'm gonna come into the container on here and I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of padding on the left and right just to give it a bit of breathing space and not sit flush against the edges. But you can see that's how we go about creating these sort of multi-column layouts, giving us all the flexibility we need to be able to create any kind of design that we want for our cards. In this section, I'm going to show you an alternative, arguably probably simpler way of setting up our grid. So let's go ahead and take off all the things we've done in the previous step to do with the calculations and so on. And let me show you a second way of achieving a similar result. Okay, so first of all, let's select our container and remove anything that we don't need. So I'm going to switch everything off so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So we're going to just remove all these alignments and the column gaps and everything else to go with it. 
just to clear things up. We'll jump over to our style. We'll make sure inside there, we'll just remove any padding or margins as well. We'll leave the width because this is the overall container width, which is perfectly fine. Everything else is pretty much cleared from there. And the second thing we'll do is come into our card design. We'll just collapse that for now, just to keep things nice and clean and simple. Select that, again, come onto our content. We'll leave the query loop and everything. We're gonna remove the flex grow and the flex basis. Hop over into styles, background and border, we leave all that. So we're basically now starting off with what we had before we applied that calc. So if we scroll down, you can see there's basically each one of our recipes. So let's go ahead and adjust this now. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that our container is selected. Our container contains all of our card designs. So we'll select that. We'll leave the HTML tag set to div. We're gonna set the flex wrap to be wrap because we obviously need things to wrap around. So we'll set that option on there and we'll set this to be horizontal or row. We'll do that and we'll also come in and we can set our space in. Now you can choose between things like space between, space around, space evenly. It's up to you, kind of personal preference. For this, we'll start off with a space evenly. We might come back and adjust it afterwards. Once we've done that, we've now basically finished with the container for this portion. What we need to do now is make sure we select our card design container. So inside there, there's all the different relevant pieces, the image, post title, and so on. So with the, part, the card design selected, which is our loop, if we come over to the content area and check, you can see the loop is enabled and our query is still the same. We're just going through the posts. So now what we need to do is set a few things up inside here. So there's nothing we really need to do inside the content. We're gonna come into the style area and we're gonna come in and set our width. Now we want three columns wide, so you'd think 33.33% would be the perfect example. Let's try it. And there we go. You're pretty much right. It is doing what you'd expect it to do. The problem we have though is everything now sits totally flush against each other. And there's a bit of a problem with that. If we start adding spacing and padding and margins and things, it can get a little bit problematic. So the easier way of dealing with this is changing the width from 33% and try something like 32%. That just gives us a bit of breathing space. And because we've got the option set up inside our content for the container and we've got things to space evenly or space around or space between, whichever way you prefer to work, that automatically puts the gaps around it to make sure everything stacks up nice and neat side by side. Obviously, you need to make sure that the top and bottom has a bit of spacing. So to do that, we're gonna come into our card design, into our styles option, and make sure we've got some spacing. And we'll just say five rem at the bottom, for example. And you can see that now gives us spacing at the bottom of that particular card design. So that's the basics covered for the single desktop layout. Let's go ahead, save that. Now, if we switch over into tablet or portrait view, we need to make sure that even though we took off the settings for the desktop view, we need to make sure they're all cleared out for this as well, because otherwise what we try to do will just basically be overwritten. So you can see I'm in the content section. I just need to clear out the flex grow, shrink, and flex basis. And that now puts us back to what we had in the desktop version, three columns side by side. Obviously, if you were doing this from scratch, you won't have to clear those out. So what we need to do now is, again, making sure the card design is selected, hop over into style, and change our width of 32% to something like 49%. And boom, there you go. Actually, let's just take that down to 48% just to give us a bit more space. And as you can see, that's now giving us spacing around the area. If we come into a container, come into content, again, we can make sure that the space evenly or space around, whatever we choose is going to be selected to give us the nice spacing around things. If we want to adjust the horizontal vertical spacing, we can do those with percentages and rems and so on. And the final thing we need to do now is come into our mobile view. And as you can see, everything looks pretty good inside there, but that's because we still have that setting for the flex basis and everything for our card design. So again, let's select our card design. Let's remove that 100% from there. So we'll clear that out. And again, this is what you would be starting off with if you were starting with a clean slate. And all we need to do is with our card design selected, hop into style, set our width, and we'll say 98%. And you can see that now positions it in our design, one on top of the other. So now when we switch between the different views, so if we go back to desktop, we have our three columns with the space around it. If we switch into tablet portrait, you can see we have two columns with space around it. And if we go into mobile, we have a single column. So two different ways in which you can approach creating these card designs. Hopefully, you'll pick one that works the best for you. But it's a good introduction to see how calc can actually work. And if you want to go down a more simplified route, the second method might be a better way of working.
final thing is you just need to go through and make sure that everything looks the way you want text styling and so on is all consistent across the board when you're working with your different responsive modes but ultimately this is an incredibly powerful way of being able to build out your custom loop designs using a range of both simple and intermediate advanced techniques. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.